morning, everyone. Welcome back to another coffee stream. For these mornings, for this week, we'll be playing some uh, Hunter Call of the Wild. The call has beckoned. We shall do more hunting and stuff. Laura and I are uh, trying something new. Uh, started today. Didn't start right in the beginning of the week, but uh, we're going to the gyms in the morning now. And so, this is what we did today. Woke up around 4.30, and uh, we just practically went straight to the gym. Had to get some of our stuff ready because we also hit the sauna like right after our workout. And um, I do have to say it. It is so much better <laughs> going into the, you know, actually working out in the morning because you have the rest of the day to do as many things as you, as you want and as you need. The gym won't get in the way of like, you know, it mainly just gets in the way because it like halts things. And then you have to kind of focus on working out in the middle of the day. It kind of just, it disrupts the flow. And um, now that we're going to the gym uh, in the mornings, we're going to try and do it more often. If for some reason we just can't get up at 4.30, um, we'll, we'll do our afternoon workouts and all that. But yeah, we'll, I'll definitely let you know if... Um, I'll definitely let you guys know if we're going to have to do more uh, longer streams, you know, now that we have the rest of the day open for other stuff. But today, however, uh, Laura and I are going to a concert. She's going to be kind of arriving well, around three-ish or so. And <clears throat> so I'm thinking the stream uh, it will last as up to around 3 o'clock or so. So, just a nice little heads up for you guys. I'm going to try and eat a little bit of lunch just before, you know, around 12 or so. So there will be a there will be a break in the middle of the um, Cyberpunk stream later on today. Oh yeah, you got that. Man, it looks so bright downstairs, but it really isn't. <laughs> It's like that overcasty look to it, and yet it's so freaking bright right here. We need to put like a panel right around here that just kind of blocks it off, like it blocks that light off, so it doesn't. It's not as super blinding to look at. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm I'm feeling great now that I've you know worked out around five at five a.m. <laughs> And then we got home, got cleaned up, you know, put on a pot of coffee. Lars making um some type of dinner for today, and she's putting in slow cooker. And I gotta uh, once again, that's another reason why I'm probably gonna go on break around twelve ish or so to make sure it's not gonna overflow. It's already packed. I'm really hoping not. Uh, we'll we'll find out. <laughs> I hear, if I hear things downstairs, then it's like, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go on break real quickly just to check the, uh, slow cooker, make sure nothing's overflowing. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's nice. It's nice. Uh, we're going to try and definitely work out, go to our actual gym stuff in the mornings. And there's definitely different clientele in the morning. Um, I'm not surprised too when we got there. There's, there's a lot more older clientele at the gym in the morning. You now early birds get the worm, and I guess the old people are the early birds. You got a couple other people that are probably you know, you know they probably work most of their day, so the only time they can really go to the gym is in the morning. But uh, I guess our current gym right now is starting to extend their hours. They're trying to get back to 24 hours. But at the same time, with regulations and everything like that, and probably shortages of staff, can't really do it. <laughs> so it's, not, it's kind of understandable. But, yeah, it, 
due to the fact that the gym opens around 5, we can get up at 4.30, you know, get ready and everything, you know, eat a protein bar just before we go, drink a little bit of water, and just head straight out, hit the gym for a bit, and um, come right back home, get some coffee or whatever we need, and I could start the stream in a somewhat in an earlier fashion. Not super early when I do it, but... Yeah. Other than that, though, it's uh, I, th- I think this will work out a lot better. But man, I am going to be slightly tired here and there. This is why I'm still going to try and drink coffee in the morning because I am still, you know, slightly exhausted. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. It's really good. Yeah, but for you guys that don't know, uh, Laura and I are going to be going to the concerts today. It's going to be four bands in total in the concert. It's going to be uh, In Flames, uh, Trivium, uh, Lamb of God, and of course, Megadeth. Those are going to be the four bands that we'll be uh, watching and all that. Laura's coming upstairs. She's probably going to say goodbye. Okay. <sighs> All right. You have a good rest of your day. See you around three. Well, you'll see you. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be playing some Hunter in the meantime while we're, you know, drinking coffee, waking up. Then we'll, you know, take a quick little break, get some water, stretch your legs, and we'll play some more cyberpunk stuff like that then i'll get ready for of course the concert i'll let you guys know how the concert went should be good (laughs) my man i am uh i'm i'm like physically tired because uh we went to the gym yesterday around uh, 5.30-ish or so. So we've been to two gym visits in less than 12 hours. And it's like, fuck. (laughs) Now that I'm like thinking about it, it's like, okay, our body hasn't had a lot of rest yet. So today our body is going to try and rest, but we're also going to a freaking metal concert (laughs) later on. I think the doors open around four or something. Then the concert starts around five. And of course with four bands. And of course one of them, Megadeth, is probably going to be the longest show next to Lamb of God. Um, it's going to be a long car- concert. I have a feeling like you know it starts around five, but it'll probably end around 10, 11 at the latest. So we're going to be really tired. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking, I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, tomorrow might take a little nap after going to the gym and everything, uh, if I need to. (laughs) Yeah, uh, Lauren, her knees are leaving now. Just making sure everything is going smoothly. Yeah. Um. Well, happy morning to you guys. It's good old Tuesday. Yeah. With our coffee streams, not too worried about production, entertainment. We're just vibing. We're just vibing. But yeah, a uh, goal. I guess, if there's any goals in coffee streams. Uh, The goal for the hunter for today is just to hunt in the Yukon Valley. So we're up in Alaska. And uh, I'm going to do some of the main mission stuff to kind of get introduced to the Yukon a little bit. Because I need need to do that with all the new maps I have. So I'm going to do that. 
I'm gonna get introduced. I are I've already practically explored all the maps. Oh, well, apparently I didn't explore all of it. Unless that's like if that's a uh, Uh, well, yeah, there's like two of them. I don't know what's up. There's three. What? Is there like three houses I have not actually... Outposts that I have not claimed? I know this one you can't claim because, uh... I guess it's story related. So, that's another reason why I would like to push the story a little bit more in... At least to Yukon. But I didn't even... I don't even think I've started it except for like... Hunted and then I did a... An outlook. <laughs> That's about it. You know what's like the most awkward feeling? It was uh, trying to t take a drag off of that and uh, start to feel a burp coming. And I was like, oh, sh fuck. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Alright, so they said around two miles where I am. I need to place a lid on a bear proof. Like, oh, let me. On a bear proof trash can. Welcome to Alaska. Yep. Welcome to Alaska. Jim Murray. Uh, let's see. What direction is this? About that direction, so I'm guessing it's about two miles out, so oh around here. Alright, cool, I get us fast travel. Get us fast travel and put the lid on the trash can. A hundred years ago or so, felled trees would be dragged down there. So you know helicopter teams would strip them down and roll them into the river. Then they'd be bundled up and towed out to the sawmills. The outpost sits on top of the old workers' campsite. Cool. Yeah, I'm a little... I'm hurt. <laughs> Jesus. Fucking loud. ...heavy-duty trash cans. But if they leave it just a little bit open, all sorts of trouble could come sniffing around. I think we got lucky this time. We'll see about that. Taking care of that. Oh, one last thing. Before you move on, can you take a look at the firewood inside the cabin? Oh, well. This firewood? Damn, this is bad news. These logs have all the signs of a beetle infestation. Let me see if I can check in with the hunters who must have cut the firewood. I have the number for their satellite phone in the log somewhere. I'll get back to you. You do that. Ah, ah. I just found the number. I knew I had it here somewhere. I'll give the hunters who stayed here a call and see what they have to say. Let's see. I'll call you back in a moment after I've landed. <sighs> I'm going to get ready for the hunt. Just got to figure out what I'm hunting. Um, we also don't have a lot of money right now. No answers from the hunters yet. I'll keep trying. There's an outpost in the forest to your northwest. If you follow the trail, you'll find it. I have a hunch that... Oh, phone's ringing. I'll call you back when I get some answers from these guys about where they cut the wood. Head to the forest outpost in the meantime. I'll bet that's where they were. Cool, cool. I'm going to, uh, let's see, that's my, so I don't want to do my ranger, I want to, do... I want to do my ranger, two, four, three, two, forty-three, polymer, and, so I can finally, finally hunt ducks, geese, rabbits, oh, and comfortably. Mm. 
General. Morning. Morning, morning, morning. Na, 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 na. Yeah, let's get that ammo, man. Uh, sights. Put a sight on it. All that. Said that Skywalker Saga don't have online co op. Yeah, it's a. Uh... That's weird if they really don't actually have it. I know they have the traditional local co-op. I mean, most likely the only time I'm going to play co-op, at least um, in a Star Wars game, is probably locally. So it works for me, but it, it does kind of stink if they don't have online co-op. I'm down for it, though. I'm still probably going to... That's not going to deter me from playing it. It's, it was like, look, that's like nine Lego games in one bundle. I'm going to get it. <laughs> I'm so going to get it. Oh, uh, if you're playing on PlayStation. Yeah. Or uh, I think in Steam probably has something like that, too. Oh yeah, is uh the Skywalker saga not full price? Was it like ten, twenty dollars cheaper in a full price game? If so, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, let me get my weapon situated. Okay, that's my seven MM. And that's my two forty Ah, uh, yeah, for once, we don't have to buy a game for full price. Thank God. Alright, where am I going? Oh, I could just fast travel. <laughs> We're just going to an outpost, so. Hey, <sighs> I see you're near the forest outpost. No shit. Once you get up there, take a look in the cabin. There should be a backpack with some supplies in it. When you find it, just grab the whole pack. I had a chat with the hunters who chopped the logs you found at Logger's Point. Mm -hmm. Turns out that the cabin had been out of firewood, so they'd gone looking for a fallen tree to carve up. Fallen the tree. The same forest they were when they found our beetle-infested tree. What do they want me to do? Are we waiting for more dialogue, or do I need to do something? He said something. Pick up backpack. Is it inside the cabin? I'm guessing it's gonna be inside the cabin. Ah, there it is. That's a fanny pack. <laughs> Once you're done at the outpost, take a look in the surrounding forest. Can you find any fallen trees in that area? I'll look for fallen trees. The spruce bark beetles are a massive threat to Alaska's spruce forests at the moment. We haven't been hit as badly compared to some other Alaskan state parks. But I think that it may be time for a quarantine. How do you quarantine okay. so a beetle infestation? I want you to take a look at its bark. Does it look healthy? If so, it's probably not the tree we're looking for. Okay. What's the signs for a bad bark? I'm guessing there's holes and all that in it. I was thinking it was like if it's beetles and all that, they're probably making holes within the bark and wood. Or what are they called? Spruce beetles? Well yeah, I'm I'm actually you know, in in game I'm further up north than general. General's usually north north of me. In that pack, you should have a canister of paint and a nozzle attachment. Use them to paint a big pink X on the tree. And let's take a look around to make sure the beetles haven't started to spread. We'll find out about that. If you see a spruce in the immediate vicinity of the fallen tree, mark it. And our forestry team will come out and take care of it. If it's untouched, they can just spray it with pesticides to protect it. 
if it's already infested, then they'll cut it down and haul it away for burning. So they have to burn a whole tree to make sure it's not spreading the beetles. That's a uh, it's gotta be tricky though. You're you're dealing with insects. So I'm guessing I'm having to check the trees around it. And I'm guessing I'm having to check the trees around. Great job. That. I hope we don't need to cut these trees down, but it's the small price to pay to contain the beetles. There we go. Another tree marked. This reminds me of my summer breaks when I was a kid, helping out my dad at work. He was a tree surgeon down in Washington State. Tree surgeon? Didn't think there was a thing. I used to resent him for making me go out there and work while my friends played back home. Eventually, those trips also included hunting lessons, and that made them my favorite parts of the summer. That should do. I'll get in touch with the foresters. They can investigate the area and cut down what they need to. I'll make sure that they also pick up the firewood at Loggers Point. Don't want to take any chances. Thanks mm. for taking care of this. It's becoming a full-on phobia of mine that these beetles are going to destroy the forest here. We sprayed pesticides across the western edge of the forest as a preventative measure earlier this month. But any new chemicals in the air, soil, or water make me uneasy. Got mm, 2,500 just for spraying down some trees. In the same bag that you found the paint, there should be some plastic sample containers. Could you bring them out to the musk... Oh, sorry. I mean wetlands. Musk egg is the word we use up here in Alaska. <clears throat> That's good to know. Anyone, anyone refers to wetlands as musk, that means referring to wetland. I hear a fox. You're going to be grabbing some samples out there. So one of our research mm -hmm. teams can test the pesticides to make sure they aren't having any effect on the ecology. I pray. Actually my wife Sandy's idea. She runs the Yukon Valley Nature Center. So she's working closely with a visiting research team. Gonna have a chill day, Freya? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hi, Whiskey. Why do you guys have to get so close to the PS5? Hey, back. Back. <laughs> uh, it's like I need to get like a glass shield just for the PS5 so the dogs don't accidentally nudge it. Like, hey, look here. It's, it's a machine in pro... Uh, Working in progress. Don't do it. Don't you dare. Welcome to Yukon Valley's wetlands. The last time I brought both of my daughters here to spot birds, they told me that all the bird spotting in the world wasn't worth the smell. Turned out that a bear had left a rotting moose carcass in the summer sun. I decided to spot birds somewhere else, just in case the bear came back for seconds. Pesticides we're using on the forest to prevent beetle infestation are effective, but I still have my doubts about the effects on other wildlife. The flats are one of our most biodiverse regions, so I can't risk introducing anything dangerous into the water or the food chain. Watch your footing at the water's edge. It can be easy to slip and fall in. Just fill one of the containers you have with water. Can you take some samples from the water beside the forest first? We sprayed a section of the forest western edge last month, so I want to know if anything has changed since then. Will do, sir. <clears throat> so, like, I am supposed to be a hunter, but I do all this stuff too, I guess. <laughs>
kind of nice to do these missions though because you you have an objective you get paid for it on top of the trophies that you might collect it's all it's good it's good hit the camera machine gun and bioshock oh okay I, I, I know what you're talking about <laughs> Okay, I'm guessing I need to get to the waterfront and collect the water. Yeah, we're gonna have some high winds today. Well, pretty much the whole entire week in Colorado, we have high wind warnings and stuff like that. And it's also really dry. There's also been potential arsony. It's been a lot of fires near... Um, I think, uh, was it Falcon? Maybe Falcon. Nicely done. First time I was there, I misjudged how stable the edge of a pond was <laughs> and ended up with one leg knee deep in the water. Yeah, you gotta get to them quickly. Time and luckily nobody saw it happen. Can you grab a second sample from a body of water slightly further away from the forest? Slightly, huh? It's over half a mile away. <laughs> Not, I won't consider that slightly. Three days of rain? Can you give some of that rain to us? We ain't, we're going through a drought right now in Colorado. It hasn't rained or snow in quite some time, like a few weeks now. We really, really need the rain. <laughs> We really need the rain, man. Because all these fires are really not helping. And if it rains too much in one time, there's going to be floods and, you know, flash floods and all that. It's going to be dangerous. So hopefully it, like, easily rains and then it just one day just pours constantly. We really need it. <laughs> Colorado is starting to turn into California where it doesn't rain at all. <sighs> know, it seems like every year that passes we get less rain as it goes. A lot of people in their households that have a little bit of like land, like a, you know, like a front yard and a backyard, they're starting to tear out their uh, turf and put gravel and rocks and all that instead. Or just actually put turf down so that way they don't have to worry about watering grass and keeping grass alive. <laughs> it's getting to that point. Like I know my mom in her backyard, she's going to put turf down for the dogs and stuff. So that way it's not just like dirt in the backyard. Because uh, we got two big dogs that tear up the the ground as they you know kind of play and all that stuff so it's no longer grass at least in the front <laughs> oh what's that damn mooses we got damn mooses it's not a very good moose but i might take him what's the moose in front of him is that a female moose can't quite tell. I'll have to shoot right behind the right behind the back of the leg. Might as well claim a trophy. Booyah! Let's see if he drops. It's not the quickest kill. He's dead though. That's a that's a one hundred percent. Yeah, his uh his rack though isn't that big, but he's the first male moose in the Yukon I found. So I'm gonna claim him. I'm gonna claim him. Let's see, he was eating over here. Yeah, that's where I shot him. 
Yeah, vital organ hit. It's like our dog's going straight to the kill. Gonna have to buy some more ammo for that gun. <laughs> Don't have a lot. Yeah, I'm thinking that's uh, silver at most, but it's probably gonna be a bronze because it's such a small, small rack. It's like if it's a bronze, it's not because of my shooting. But I need the money. It's my dog. Oh, okay. He's right over there. <laughs> Mr. Mears, yeah, his his rack is not that good. It's a silver. It's about seven hundred and fourteen. It's not bad. Here's a treat, buddy. Good boy. Alright, back to it. Might as well see anything in the distance that I could probably pop. There's a tree, some type of stand. It's like a ground blind or a stand stand. Can't tell until I get to it. ever go hunting you see like a deer or a moose that's been buried if you're even in the radius you might be in danger because <laughs> that means there's a grizzly bear nearby and you have no clue what direction that grizzly bear is located so and you do not touch the moose or whatever animal that's been buried because <laughs> they like partially bury it in a way. You'll probably see like an antler or a leg sticking out of the ground and all that. And you're probably wondering like, what the fuck? And then if you know that information, it's like, shit. <laughs> Surprised they don't try and maybe simulate that in the game. I think there's a lot of detail put to put in. And that means they would have to have land deformation in order to have that happen. It'd be really cool though. You know, character comes across a buried moose and is like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> I am so dead. There's no way I'm going to be able to kill the grizzly in time. <laughs> See if there's anything out there. Near the water. But it's also not too, it's not super early in the morning. Not a lot of creatures are trying to drink and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. What I know though, it's like Alaska's the last frontier. Next to maybe some other countries, but and when it comes to America, it, Alaska's literally, literally the last frontier. 
land wise. <laughs> then we have all the untouched frontiers like the ocean and um, space. Those are other frontiers that we have not truly decide to explore. And that space we're trying to do a little bit more of, but it's so weird that. We're trying not, we don't want to explore the ocean as much as space. Like, we should really try and tackle the ocean first before going all out ham on space. So we, we, I think before we even try and claim another planet like Mars, we should really get to know, like, full out our Mother Earth. Or we can say it's like, hey, look. We're doing the thing. I don't see any local wildlife nearby. Guess I'll just collect the water and see what happens. Surprised I haven't ran into any grizzlies yet. So I think this is another area where grizzly bears are. Next to Russia. Which actually, I think Russia, they classify it just as a... Ooh, bison. Classify as just a brown bear, not technically right. grizzly. Brown bears and grizzlies are practically the same, Next though. Job. I need you to find me some animal droppings in this region. The muskeg is a hotbed of animal activity, so you should find droppings quite easily. Okay, so I just gotta find poo. Uh. So I think as long as I just decide to drift it out to the flats, I want to know if it's making it into the food chain. It's been a month since we sprayed, so there's been plenty of time for the pesticides to get out here. Hmm. So all I have to do is like spray in one like heavily traffic trafficked area. And those pesticides will, I guess, kind of spread it over time killing the beetles but not really harming anything else pretty smart pretty good all right gotta find animal droppings just looking around in the okie dokie lane First things first, I just need to find some, like, tracks. If I can find tracks, I'll find poo. <laughs> do 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 I'm not seeing any signs of wildlife. <clears throat> Could be the time that I'm actually kind of exploring right now though. Not a lot of animals running in the belt right now. Just kind of walking around the lake here. Little pond lake. I would say, looking the size of it, it's more of a pond. I don't really know if you would classify that as a lake. Still no droppings. Wonder what the region. I'm guessing just this whole region here. It's my uh, exploration zone for. The poo. Could go where that animal was. Yeah, the bison. Maybe bag myself a bison while I'm looking for poo. I'm looking for poo. He got the stank stank. Ah. <sighs> It's like, yeah, General, if you're still here, 
I definitely recommend working out in the morning, especially uh, if you have a very busy schedule and if your gym is open early enough. Definitely, definitely start working out in the morning. So that's what we did. Woke up around 4.30, hit that gym like no tomorrow. It was good. It was very good. Tired. <laughs> Already tried. They have to work in the mornings. That's the thing too, is like Laura has to get to work by 8 o'clock, but... You know, depending on when your gym opens, you can always wake up real early, go to the gym, take a quick rinse and all that, and then go straight to work afterwards after you probably grab yourself a little nibble of food. Is that what your work hours are? Wait. Or is that like your gym hours of when they're open? Because I would say, do you work at, do you work from 7 to 9? <laughs> That's a, it's a long, uh, it's a long period. It's over twelve hours. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you're saying nine. Oh, nine a.m. Oh, okay. This is a two-hour shift. <clears throat> so that's not too bad then. Um, that means like after you finish work, you can go straight to the gym then. It'll still be kind of morning, so I guess your 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 schedule is a little bit more flexible. It's like, oh yeah, I only work this amount of time, then I can kind of do other stuff afterwards. Oh, is that the poo? Ah, oh, finally, That's what caribou poo, Perfect. caribou. Could I haven't hunted any caribou from a different species as well. I, uh, to grab a larger sample size while you're already there in the field. So I got the caribou. Now I need to find other poo from other animals. I go right. Uh, okay. So that's why it's like a, a certain time period. It's between seven and nine. People are going to school. You got to make sure they don't get hit by cars. <laughs> You know how kids are. Some kids will just run out in the old friggin' road and cause an accident. <laughs> they do. <laughs> but they, uh, that's why there's cross guards, man. Can't trust kids uh, crossing the street. It's I was about to say these days, but I think that was like that even in the 70s and all the way back to the 50s. Kids are like fucking causing chaos and mayhem and shit. Ooh. That looks like a decent moose. What about that bison though? Is that bison good? Oh, he's starting to walk away. Oh, I might get that moose. I might get a better angle on him and then pop him. Pop him real quickly. Hopefully he poops. <laughs> Hopefully he shits himself before he dies. Alright, watch this. Watch this, General. This is how you hunt a moose. They don't have good eyesight, but they have really good hearing and smell. Smelling. So as long as you're sneaking up on him, you're out of, you know, you're not downwind from him and all that stuff too. You're gonna get him. It's not that good of an angle. I could probably get his stomach accidentally if I do it. Boom! Let's see if he dies or not. I think he should. I shot his lung. Moose lungs are huge. And he's dead. If you guys are wondering why I'm ever, after every shot, 
and I go into the uh, the map, I'm making sure it's a confirmed kill. Usually, once hunting pressure is you know, applied, that means an animal died. So that's a nice little pro tip for anyone that's starting this game. Once you shoot an animal and, you know, you wait like about maximum of 10 seconds. You know, I think if 10 seconds pass and that animal hasn't died yet, then I think the score starts to drop a bit because it's not a quick kill anymore. I don't know what exact time you'll need to make it a quick kill. I don't know what they intend quick kill to be but if it's a quick kill you hit it in one go it, it's gonna be a 100% every time you're gonna get the best score out of that ammo that you can get mm. so I think once I harvest him I need to go back to this area and see if he's left any droppings oh that might be poop right there where is that blood that is poop. Thank God. That should do it. Now we'll be able to tell if anything larger than a fly is ingesting chemicals that we should be worried about. Yeah. Work, waiting through the I'm wait until he's done talking. I have a spot where you can drop the samples off and I can easily pick them up. Oh, I just remembered. I've been speaking with my wife about the work you've been doing. And she mentioned a few tasks that she has on her plate that I think you could help her with. I your gave her your number. Wife does this type of work too, dude. She's working on some very important stuff <laughs> at the moment. Hang on a second. I'm getting a call. It's not that bad of a moose. Pretty good. Uh, it's still silver though. It's still not great. Okay, I'm back. It's one hundred percent though. I change of plans. Before you drop off the samples. I need you to grab a hatchet from the outpost at the western edge of the flats. Another... well, if it's near an outpost... ...situation out in the northwest corner of the reserve, and you're perfectly placed to take care of it. It looks like storms have weakened the roots of a tree, <clears throat> which is about to collapse onto the train tracks. Oh, shit. Let me know when you grab the hatchet. So let me guess, you want to chop down the tree and make sure it doesn't land on the tracks. Got it. God, I'm like his little, little errand boy. It's like, you know I'm like the best hunter in the world. You're having me cut down trees. Okay. I'll go with it for now. Alright, he wants me to grab an axe. Should be... Would it be in the bin? Where's this fucking axe? There's a shovel. Where are you putting your axes? Is it outside? Oh, it was right there. Cool. Visitors haven't been using it to open their beans. You're gonna need a nice sharp edge. It's small, but it should do the job. Let's get a stone. Let's get a nice smooth stone and sharpen that axe. I'll be flying over it on my way home. If you drop that stuff off there, I can jump out, grab it, and get it to one of our ecological research teams today. Instead of you having to walk around with a bag full of droppings and swamp water. Yeah. Would be preferable. It's another half mile out that way. Oh yeah, there's nowhere I can like fast travel to in order to <laughs> we can kind of get it going. So I guess I'm walking. I'm hoofing it. I'm gonna try and stream at least till three o'clock today, so that way we can have a nice long morning stream slash playthrough continuation of uh cyberpunk and uh after that Laura and I are gonna go to a concert 
It's gonna be Nash. It's gonna be Nash. Mm -mm. That looks like moose tracks, or is it? Yep. I don't know if moose tracks and caribou tracks look kind of similar. And caribou, if anything, their tracks look more like elk tracks. So I wonder if I'm trying to remember if they're in the same family or not. Actually, I'm kind of wondering if elk are in the Yukon. It would just be kind of nice to actually hunt in an area that doesn't, it's not like swarming with red deer or just deer in general. <laughs> I actually have other species I can focus on. They're very nice. I do, however, want to try and get the Mississippi uh, map one day and start hunting alligator. I had no clue that people hunted alligator with guns, though. I was like, ooh, interesting. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it's just like, I don't know the physiology of an alligator, where to shoot it. I'm guessing their heart's kind of like somewhat in the back of a leg. You probably have to aim a little higher, probably just between the top scales and the soft spot. I don't know. I heard the moose warning. Just didn't pinpoint it. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I heard a lot of people have a hard time hunting in the Yukon because uh, so many, like... I guess it's just, like, in this area they have a hard time hunting because there's not a lot of crossing areas. There's, like, maybe here. I guess if you're like here and you shoot something like way over here, which I don't think that's possible in the game. So animals spawn around 500 meters, 600 meters in viewing distance. So I don't know. It was insanely hard to get a kill further than 550 meters away because the animals will like disappear from view <laughs> after a certain point and I was like how am I gonna get this trophy and somehow I got it I was like oh man I got it somehow <laughs> uh. such an odd feeling though yeah, you know, waking up real early and you can't tell if I can't tell if I'm tired if I'm mainly because I'm tired physically or if I'm just tired because I woke up real early. <laughs> like Laura and I didn't even like get a too we didn't get too much of a good sleep because apparently both of us were waking up at int like intermittently. Like I woke up around one thirty Thinking it was like, oh, is it four? <laughs> is it four thirty yet? And it's like, nope. So I tried to go back to sleep, and then apparently Lara woke up around two thirty, and it was like, nope, it's not four thirty. <laughs> Our brain is trying to get used to the new wake up time, and I'm I'm usually the person that wakes up a little bit later because you know I'm not having to wake up as early as Lara. Lara likes to wake up around like five five thirty. And um, just kind of do her thing, do her little morning routine. And I'll probably get out of bed around 6.30 or so and get ready for the stream. And um, that's pretty much our day. <laughs> it's pretty much, pretty much our morning routine. I'm the guy that wakes up later. Can I cross this? It is not deep enough, so I can. 
saw some dude in a, in a hunter subreddit complaining that uh you can't uh, oh what the fuck is that my dog my dog just scare all those guys away that was my dog oh oh my dog's right there Better be glad I'm not hunting moose right now. I would have shot someone. Although that one of those moose looked like a gold moose. So I was like, ah, I probably should have. So that was a good example of how moose are like blind as a bat, but they kind of heard me. I was like, yeah, if they were able to see me like the other animals, they would have probably ran off. A lot sooner. I like how, even though I know bats aren't blind, I still use that like phrase <laughs> blind as a bat. It's like, I know blind, bats aren't blind. They're not blind. They have poor eyesight, but they can, they can see. <laughs> They probably have like I think they're like I'm trying to remember if they're near vision. I think they're near nearsighted. It's like they're nearsighted. Most of them are I think if not the whole entire bat species themselves are just nearsighted, but do most of their hunting with echolocation. Echolocation and smells. They have like a, apparently a really good sniffer. And smell bugs in midair and like pretty much locate them that way too. So smell and echolocation is like their their golden golden child. Man, so I'm going over here to cut down a tree. That could be endangering a railway. Hopefully it hasn't fallen already. Ooh, but I do have to say, though, working out in the morning, then kind of trying to do the morning streams and all that, I'm, I'm getting hungrier faster. My body is, like, craving food. So I might have to actually, like, even though I'm fasting till 12, it might be pretty smart for me to at least get something with, like, protein. It's like, yeah, I did eat a protein bar that had, like, 20 grams of, like, protein in it before the workout. But I'm thinking it's like, actually, it might be smarter of me to eat that protein bar after the workout and all that stuff. Because I'm not necessarily needing food, like, right away after a workout. Because we, like, wake up and go straight to the gym. It's not like I really need the food right away. But it's like, ooh. But afterwards, though. <laughs> okay. So, like, next time we go to the gym, exactly what we're going to try and do. <laughs> It's like, okay, don't eat the protein bar until after the gym. So I'll probably, like, bring a protein bar with me. As we're walking out, I'm just going to munch on a protein bar. <laughs> it's like, after you work out in the gym, your body's craving protein, craving potassium, sodium... It's also craving certain type of an acid, uh, some type of like, you know, acids for the joints and muscles. So like squeezing some lime into like, you know, water that you're drinking also really helps. This makes everything like, you know, doable. <laughs> So that's why I should be drinking instead of coffee. I should, which, I don't know, coffee helps. Did you know coffee is a good source of uh, burning ca carbohydrates? It uh, kickstarts that. This isn't a railway. The oh, they want to put that there. Okay. I'll be over that way as soon as I can. Cool. Really 
appreciate the assistance. Oh yeah, he's not in a helicopter. And wading into swamp water might not be glamorous or exciting, but it's part of a massive effort to maintain the boat. balance of life. Out Fishing. It Let's have it. Difference. Come on. They tease us with like boats and lakes and shit like that. I know uh one of our viewers, APC, says uh, this game would not be good with uh, fishing. But let's give him a chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of a hike, but it's worth it to see the rail bridge. Let me know once you found the tree. With any luck, it won't take you long to clear it out of the way. I would like to. Uh, I would like to see different type of mechanics in this game eventually in the future. So I don't know if this development team is working on any new projects, but man, they have been supporting this game from no tomorrow. You played this game a few years ago, and then you play this game now. There have been things that have changed quite a bit. I think the graphic fidelity too has went up as it as it goes. I'm just surprised they haven't had a. PS5 edition for this game though like I'm playing this on the PS5 yeah it's running better and everything but it would benefit I think this game would benefit if it had like a some type of next gen update free of course hopefully you don't have to pay for it <laughs> Nintendo won't do bundle with any wait won't do bundle with any game also House of um, House of Dead remake is out on the Switch oh shit really it's already out. I'm gonna have to look at the reviews for it. Is it only gonna be on the Switch? I wonder if the house is hopefully the House of Dead remakes also on like stuff like PC and shit. I'm I'm guessing it's mainly on the Switch because you can use your uh Joy-Con and all that as a, like a, the aiming source for your gun. This is gonna be hard to play a House of Dead game without like a light gun. I have to use a Joy-Con instead. That means Lara and I can shoot some zombies. We need we need new Joy-Cons, though. Um, that's the one thing you guys... That's the one reason why you guys haven't seen a lot of Switch games on the channel. Is, like, all of our controllers for the Nintendo Switch are just fucked up. <laughs> They're absolutely fucked up. Yeah, I, I remember some of the older... Um, like House of the Dead games for the consoles, you could use controllers, but they didn't. They were, it just quite wasn't the same, mainly because it's like House of the Dead was born practically in the arcades, and they work so well with just light gun mechanics. But I I remember playing like uh. A House of the Dead game that was specifically just for the consoles. And it was like kind of raunchy and stuff like that. It wasn't like your typical House of the Dead game. I forgot what it was called. It was a House of the Dead game that came out for like Xbox 360, PS3. And I think it was also on PC, but wasn't that great of a game. But it was a decent like light shooter. Oh, not Time Crisis. I'm I'm talking about a, I'm talking about like an actual House of the Dead game. Time Crisis series were good. I remember getting Time Crisis Four. I I actually had that, and also I actually had a light gun that I used it. So I actually had a Time Crisis set up in the house. Yeah, they need to make more of those games. <laughs> <laughs> I know that like, if you go to the arcades and all that, you'll probably see like a Time Crisis machine or something like that. But those games were good too. I enjoyed Time Crisis. You know what other game that needs to come back that has the word Crisis in the title? Dino Crisis. Dino Crisis, they need to give it the old Resident Evil remake treatment. That's what they need to do. I would like to see Dino Crisis come back. Because Capcom owns the license. I, I still think they own the IP license for it. So why not, like, 
boot that bad boy up. It's about time to do it. That's that's my dream for Capcom. Capcom, you're doing wonderful with Monster Hunter. You're doing awesome with your fighting games. You're doing a fantastic job with the Resident Evil series. But can we have Dino Crisis? Can a resurgence of that come back? Please? This is a, this is a big old reboot of the franchise. It's like, yeah, a remake would be nice, but I think a reboot would be even better because they, you know, make the story actually decent would be kind of cool, too. But yeah, like, some type of, like, Resident Evil 2 remake version of those games. You know, like, you, they can even use the Resident Evil engine. And, um, you know, instead of zombies, it's fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> it would be awesome. I would be so down for it. Had to, like the scariest thing is like you're in corridors and all that and then you see like a a raptor turning the corner it'd be some scary shit <laughs> uh man seeing it like a raptor coming down the corridor and it's like oh shit I need to go into another room fast that would that would be so fucking dope <laughs> That's threatening to fall onto the tracks. I'm guessing it was loosened in a recent storm. Yukon Valley tends to get a few lightning storms each summer, but we do a thorough job of preparing. So we only saw a couple of small fires that went out on their own. Small fires. My team are still recording the after effects of the storms. I've heard reports of huge trees with deep roots that are now at precarious angles and might need to be cut down. We're lucky to have such isolated incidents. Other reserves have reported landslides. Ugh. Landslides are dangerous as fuck too, man. I claim so many lives. Especially the uh, people that build villages and towns and all that near like hills and valleys. That's that's risky, man. Building like a town like, for instance, like just below that hill over there. It's like, you know how fucking risky that you're making it for the people that have to live there? I've only ever seen one landslide in person, and that was from the air. Even from up there, it was a shocking display of natural force. It was all I could do to land the plane before the storm overtook me. Guy loves the talk. Guy just loves the talk. Yeah, I think once I find more need zones in the Yukon, there's going to be a lot more animals running around and shit. So that's the thing about this game, at least from what a lot of people said. It's hard find to know this tree need to zones. I guess the big question is how to do this properly. But I trust you to get the job done. I hope you can make do with a hatchet. Uh, oh shit. That's what... So if I cut it, it's going to fall down anyway. Great work out there. The train is behind me. And if you don't think a single tree would do more than dent it in a collision. But I'd rather not take the chance and risk a serious accident. Yeah. Speaking of the train, it's due to pass by at any moment. I'd stay clear of the tracks if I were you. Are we actually going to see a train go by? Road open is a big responsibility for us. Not only is it essential for a lot of trade out here, but the bridge brings tourists in from all over the place. I'd like a good picture of the bridge. One that we can put on our website. See if you can snap it while the train is passing over it. Sure that thing, buddy. Great. I used to come out to this corner of the reserve with my family. We'd spend long weekends camping, and I'd teach my youngest daughter, Kara, how to shoot. My older daughter, Deanna, was still an angry teenager who needed convincing to take part in any activity. She'd always be laughing and having fun by the end of the trip, though. Hmm, excuse me. Good spot to take the photo. Those 
trips are some of my favorite memories. It brought us all closer as a family. Being alone, together. Waiting on that train. Uh, uh oh yeah, yeah, take the photos, R2. Here's me talking about my family vacations when I can't even remember the last time I had dinner with my wife. Her birthday was what? A month ago? I think I'm probably oh. going to take her out somewhere nice. Take her to Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> While you're in Alaska, of all places, like you, there's so many other things you could eat that's better. Well, where's this fucking train? Am I not in the correct position? Watch. I guess I'm having to wait for the train to pass. Yeah, no, I'm in the right location for it. I'm just gonna take a photo, but that's the shot we needed. There's no train. <laughs> it's a shame we couldn't catch it with the train on top, but it's still good. I'll send this picture over to Sandy. Her team takes care of the Yukon Valley website. I wonder if I just had to wait for a certain period of time. I was going to say, like, how long do I have to wait for the train to go? Next stop, head over to an outpost that we're replacing. Okay. Not too far from where you are just now. Uh, Gavin was oh, was that one? In the Tecon forest fire two years ago. And we're in the process of replacing it with a temporary trailer. Equipped with some more modern facilities. Cool. Yeah. For the level of damage that was sustained by this area of the reserve, it has attracted several researchers who would like to perform long-term studies in the region. The Tecon Forest will host our first research outpost trial. Oh, and in case you're unaware, Tecon is a native word for wolf. Caribou? Fire destroyed part of the forest. Ooh, caribou. But the wolves are still out there. I'd make sure you keep your rifle fully loaded at all times while you're in wolf country. I look forward to your call when you find the outpost. Oh, uh, yeah, wolves. Man, that was an instant kill. <laughs> I guess uh, caribou have no chance with this gun. Dropped him like a fly. Uh, it's because I hit, like, three of his organs. <laughs> I leveled up again. Oh, woo-woo. Oh, there's the train. Um, oh, there it is. <laughs> we went train spotting. I'm such a fan of the trains. <laughs> It's kind of funny, like, you can keep leveling up as long as you want, but there's a certain period where they stop giving you perk points and shit. Oh. Shit, there's a grim. Where is it? Let's see, what class of an animal is a gray wolf? I'm guessing they're, like, four or five. Probably a ranger wolf. Ooh. Shit. I don't, okay. Yeah. Wow. He's yeah. He's dead. Oh, his body is like sliding down. That's my first wolf. If there's one wolf, there's many. Hey, it's a gold. I will, uh... 
Ooh. I hear him. Let's see. I'll replace it with that one. Yeah. That's my wolf for today. There's probably going to be many other wolves. And I killed one of them. Oh, I just noticed I shot him with the, uh, <laughs> I shot him with the 7mm and not the Ranger. I was like, oh, a little bit of overkill there. Shot him with the 7mm. Oh, and well, I might actually eat a little bit earlier today. Just depends. Just gotta keep an ear out for wolves. I know there's some just a little bit further west from me. So I know like in uh you're hunting Africa. The, mo the most dangerous animal is, of course, the lion. <laughs> but I guess in this one, you gotta watch out for wolves. Which is kind of funny, though. Wolves don't tend to actually attack humans. Oh, there's a gray wolf over there. Maybe there are certain species of wolves that are a little bit more aggressive towards humans, but for the most part, I know most of the wolves in uh in just the mainland uh the mainland they don't have a tendency to attack humans. They don't like the smell of us. Just like all the other animals, they don't really like the smell and taste of human flesh. And the thing is too is like now that I have now I have my bloodhound, he will have oh she she will have the tendency to like stop an attack. So if I am gonna get attacked by a wolf, she'll have the uh opportunity to stop it. Man shit, she protected me from a black bear once. <laughs> I was like, damn, Truffle uh, did her job well. Let's see. Apparently very old poo, but there are definitely wolves around here. Like how getting to this outpost is going to be slightly dangerous because of all these wolves. <laughs> Okay, they're running away from me. That's good. I think as long as I'm not, like, right on their ass when they find out I'm there, they won't... they won't try and kill me. <laughs> Ooh, those are very hard right there. So very hard is, like, kind of like your gold standard of what you want to hunt. That's a whole entire pack. Very easy. Hard. So it seems like your best one is the very hard over there. That's an easy one. That's a pup. Yeah, about 66 to 93 pounds. And if I'm trying to remember how heavy Frey is, she's like, she's probably like 60, maybe almost 70 pounds now. He's a heavy dog. <laughs> Her father, though, was about... 100 pounds and all that. Hello, tall boy. Welcome to the channel. 
good morning to you from us. I don't know if it's morning where you are, but it's morning where we are. <laughs> Oh, there's some wolves right in front of me. I don't know if I should shoot at him or not. I'm going to shoot at a wolf. It's going to be the very hard one. I might as well. Is that a caribou? Caribou. Brunch time! Oh, this is going pretty well. <laughs> Um, started a new schedule today where we wake up at 4.30 a.m., uh, go straight to the gym, We're at the gym for at least an hour or so, and uh, come straight home, make some coffee, start to stream, and that opens up our whole entire schedule from here on out. Because the past few weeks, heck, I think the past few months, we've been going to the gym around... Five or six o'clock, and it's been kind of eaten into our streaming times. I was like, "Yeah, I'm I'm totally down for doing the gyms even before the sun rises." Thank God, our gym opens up around five five a.m., and we were not the first ones there. <laughs> I wasn't. I shouldn't have been surprised that we're, there was a lot of older people uh, at the gym around five a.m. I was like, shh, God. <laughs> Old people and their obsession with waking up so fucking early. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. There are so many older clientele at the gym in the mornings compared to like, you know, later on in the day. <laughs> I was expecting to see more military people at the gym. I did see a few military people at the gym, but it was mostly just older, you know, and you got your geriatrics. <laughs> How do you, I can't even wake up at 630. Um, yeah, I, I grew up in a military family, so it's not super hard for me to wake up even late earlier than that. I could wake up at like 2.30, 3.30 in the morning and I'll be just fine as long as I'm like walking around a bit. <laughs> But later on in the day, I'm going to get tired. I'm drinking coffee right now, but I think later on, all that's going to be kind of rough. And by around uh, 3 o'clock or so, our stream's probably going to end. Because Laura and I are going to have to get ready for a concert. Going to a concert. Uh, I think the door's open around 4. So we have to leave the house around 3.30 or so. What time is it for us? Uh, it's 8.49, so we're mountain time. Mountain domestic time, standard time. As long as those wolves don't attack me, they can they can do whatever they want. <laughs> it's like, wolves? I'll do it. I already shot one of your out. Oh, shit. They are... I don't know. I might have to shoot one of them. There's 10 over where you are. So there's a... There's a red fox there. I don't know. I have a feeling these wolves are trying to stalk me. Hey, look, fox. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about these stupid wolves. Alright, I'm gonna just shoot one of them and scare off the pack. If he turns around, I can get a good shot on him. Uh, what, hit him in the lung? It's either... I hit him in the lung, or I just got his arm, and that's it. <laughs> I'll find out if he's dead in about 10 seconds. I haven't tried shooting a wolf in the front yet. 
so I don't know if I... I definitely wasn't near the heart. If I was, if I was even anywhere near the heart during that shot, he would have went down faster. Let me guess, is this a fox hunting ground? A resting ground, maybe? Let's see. It is a resting ground for fox. Red fox. Alright, I have a feeling his carcass is going to be down there. Unless he ran up that way. I don't remember. What the fuck? What is up with these wolves? Hey, hey, back it up. Back it up, buddy. I already shot your friend. Am I going to have to kill the whole pack? <laughs> I better not have to kill the whole pack, man. All right, I shot him somewhere. Oh, there's a blood stain right there. All right. All right, you know what to do. When did I start this game? Today? Around about an hour ago. Right around an hour ago. I've been playing this game for quite some time, though. All right, I, I don't like the sound that these wolves are following me. <laughs> I've been playing this game for some time. I've been playing on PlayStation for a bit and already platinum the game. Sorry, I got a platinum on it. I do have it on PC as well, but I don't have all the maps on PC. It was a long shot. Okay. Oh, I got real close to the heart. Man, that's a small heart. That's going to be so hard to get a heart. Okay, no, never mind. Okay, it's not too small. So if I'm going to try and get a heart shot on a wolf, I'm going to aim, I'm going to have to aim just about maybe a foot, a foot just below the nape. Okay, I'm going to have to remember that. Oh, yeah, I need to give you your biscuit. Biscuit. Do you want a biscuit? Here's give you a biscuit. You've been a good boy. Or girl. <laughs> Keep forgetting Truffle's a lady dog. Yeah, you're a lady dog. I'll give you a pets. I'm just going to keep my gun out. I don't trust those wolves. Freaking wolves. <laughs> I think after I shoot one of their mates, they would have left, left me alone. Maybe they did. Maybe they were trying to get away from me afterwards, but... They seem a little too aggressive to be like your normal wolf pack. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is wrong with these wolves, man? Hell, even shooting up in the air should scare them away. Or at least, you know, tell them that don't fuck with this dude. He has he has the thunder stick. He can kill any of us from a distance. <laughs> yeah, because in real life, there's not a lot of, like, wolf attacks. Hell, I think in America alone, there's only been, like, three or four deaths ever since they've recorded deaths by animals. So, people getting killed by wolves is very and insanely rare. But I don't know how it is in Alaska, though. Alaska, the wolves are different. <laughs> So, who knows? <laughs> I don't know how the wolves are up in the north, but... Yeah. Wolves in, at least America, there's only been, like, four counted deaths. There, there is very rare for people to actually get attacked by wolves. One, they just don't like our smell anyway. So... They don't... They're not interested in eating us. What the fuck? That's a huge... Okay, I was about to say it's a moose. <laughs> you 
Yeah, the game, in the other hand, they're okay. They're just programmed to attack you a lot. Uh, yeah, a lot much more. A lot more. Yeah. I know, like, a lot of people and the developers have even said we're trying to go the more realistic route of things, but there's a lot. Like this. Like this. <laughs> this moose move right here. You should have ran off a long time ago. Like, hey, little lady. Get out of here. I, I could just take the shot. Why are you not running? Oh, oh, that was a that was a messy shot. <laughs> it moved right when I pulled the trigger. Did I even shoot it? Oh, I did shoot it. It's probably not a. It was probably a shoulder shot because it moved right when I pulled the trigger. <laughs> I was trying to shoot the heart. We'll see if it dies. What level am I? I am level forty-one. Ooh, what weapon did I use? Oh, I used my 7mm. I'm good. Watch, that's not a kill shot. It was very messy. It's it's probably not going to die. That was an unethical shot. I shouldn't have taken the shot. <laughs> Vince, you shouldn't have taken the shot, you stupid idiot. <laughs> Animal's way too close to you. I am just kind of looking at the map, though, seeing if it did die or not. So if it did die, I'll claim the carcass. I saw the fires that tore through that forest, and I still struggle to accept just how quickly the landscape can transform into smoldering ash. Believe it or not, we got lucky. It could have been a lot worse. And Always can. Lucky isn't the right word. We lost too much. You could have been like California where you have fires every fucking year. <laughs> I mean, us us in Colorado, we've been having fires quite often now. And it's not even summertime yet. I was like, oh, fuck. Uh, we we suspect there's an arson arsonist in the area that's causing all the fires. It's a little too convenient that there's like fire after fire. I was like, okay, something's going on because they're pretty close to each other, too. So there's definitely an arsonist. Uh, highly, highly likely there's an arsonist that's doing some damage. It's like, man, why are you trying to burn down Colorado? This is the Basri Memorial Outpost. Or at least it will be once you get it up and running. I'll get her in. Has left the supplies that we need for the finishing touches. He was going to set it up himself, but his wife went into labor just as he got here, so he had to rush back to town. How convenient. The workstations look like they're ready to go. If this trial goes well, we might see more research <clears throat> setting up camp across the reserve. For now, though, let's get things powered up. The supplies will include fuel for the generator. What the fuck? Why is it just switching? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like I don't have anything else in my inventory right now because I'm not really technically hunting anything. That's not that bad of a work environment. So this is like a... Wait a minute. Someone has Hunter Call of the Wild installed on their computer. <laughs> That's kind of funny how they have their uh, little thumbnail. <laughs> Some of the computers. Wait, what do they want me to do? I'm uh, gonna set up a temporary outpost, retrieve fuel, and refuel generator. I'm guessing. Oh, okay, fuel's there, and I need to find them. A little fuel in the generator and fire it up. Get the Jerry going. Fire it up. And we're in Loud motherfucker. What? Can't hear you. <laughs> I guess we just needed to get that fuel pumping through. The outpost is just the first part of our restoration efforts. I'm gonna plant some samplings. A couple of things that you're gonna need for your next job. Plant 
planting new saplings. Take the bag of spruce saplings and the shovel, and let me mark a spot for you on your map. Yay, I'm becoming an environmentalist. Yay. <laughs> it's a tough road ahead for this part of the reserve. Mm -hmm. Fire burnt away a huge chunk of the forest. But with any luck, a program of replanting will gradually bring life back. I hope to see it happen in my lifetime. Uh, it's going to take like 10, 20 years for those trees to really grow properly. You're How old are you, sir? <laughs> You might pass away before that happens. I'm just kind of strolling. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna like run or anything. I'm gonna stroll th through the burnt down forest. <laughs> I mean, some of these trees, yeah, hey, they're not regrowing their spruce or anything. But dude. There's grass growing in the thing and all that. And usually with most forest fires, it just brings new opportunity for new life to grow. Gotta have that pure carbon, man. It feeds the land. It feeds the environment around it. Sometimes forest fires are ne necessary for life to continue. Sucks for all the little critters, though. They don't have a home to live in. All the tree dwellers. All the squirrels. The squirrels don't have places to hide their nuts anymore. No! <laughs> and it's kind of funny when I learned about squirrels, like, all the nuts they hide and all that, like, 90% of the places they hide their nuts they forget about. <laughs> So they'll come across the stash and it's like, oh, jackpot. It's like, that's your, that's your stash, dude. It's like, don't you, don't you remember? It's like, no. Squirrels have like the worst memory. It's like, they literally have ADHD. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, squirrels, man, they're kind of like, they have a little bit better memory than, like, you know, goldfish and shit, but they still, uh, <laughs> they still have some pretty bad memory. I was like, how do they, how do they survive as a species? Oh, <coughs> excuse me, holy crap. Apparently it's, uh, it's time to sneeze and lose your voice. There's like hardly anything out here except for like, I think I came across a bear in these parts, but I think there's mainly like wolves for the most part. It's like, oh, okay, they're near the burnt down forest. Great. It's turning into Dark Souls real quickly. <laughs> I was in Tikon Forest during the night of the fire. We predicted a few spots as potential fire sites and we're doing our best to prepare. But there were too few of us and too much ground to cover. I sent most of the team away when the storm rolled over us. It was getting too dangerous. Is that ash? No, it's snow, okay. Like, there's no way there should be ash anymore. It's been two years. It's like, ah, uh, okay, we're getting, in, we're getting into the snowy bit. That'd be weird. It's like, that means there was a fire not too long ago. It's like, no, this is snow. Remember when uh, Silent Hill first came out, I was always like contemplating, is it, is it snow or is it ash? Is it snow or is it ash? Then you play the game, it's like, it's ash. <laughs> as the character will even like mention it, it's like, ash. Ash coming down from where? 
You're in the right spot. I haven't been out to that corner of the reserve for quite a while now. Well, you should uh, visit more often, huh? Alright, let's plant us the spruce. One. It's two. Hopefully they'll flourish. Yeah, Lara and I are gonna get into a herbal garden. <clears throat> so we can use it for food. Can you see the shell of the old tree? It was the first casualty when it was struck by lightning and went up in flames. Where? Oh, over here. Oh, so that's the tree that started it all? Oh yeah, I can def definitely tell I got hit by fucking lightning. Wham! Shit. We lost more than the tree that night. Oh. It took less than five minutes to the blade. <laughs> My dog's in the flashback. Uh. I found his radio. A part of me knew straight away that we'd lost him. I wanted to go further in and look for him, but the fire was impenetrable. The wall of heat was advancing and I couldn't stay there. I just made it out before the fire consumed where I'd been standing seconds before. We went back as soon as the fires had died down and started looking. We found him, but it was as we'd feared. Charred to a crisp. Dedicated to him. We all take a special interest in overseeing the restoration of the area where we lost him. Naturally, it was a tough time for the whole team, but it brought us closer together. We supported each other and Brasri's family. You do what you can, right? We devoted ourselves to our work, and we work to ensure it never happens again. I hear wolves in the background. Today's undertaking to replace lost trees is another step in revitalizing Tikon Forest. On my last flyby, I definitely saw some movement down there. Can you scout around for tracks in the burnt forest? I'm keen to see what animals are returning to the region. Okay. Guess I need to spot animals. Find. Oh, okay, no, I need to find their tracks. So find tracks around this area. That's good enough. Well, I know wolves are here. <laughs> well, does it find three different animal tracks? Yeah. I'm going to go this way. You know what the best way to find the tracks? Go near water source. But I'm also going to try and find out what's this question mark. Yeah. Uh, and went to the gym two times in less than 12 hours. It was much. That was a lot. <laughs> Usually we have a 24 hour waiting period. But now that we uh, changed up our schedule, it's a, it's a, little, bit, it's a little bit harder to <laughs> kind of deal with. There he is. I can get a moose track if I just go this way. I have a gun to shoot her. Or do I? Nah. I'm not hunting moose right now. I ain't no hunting moose. But I will try and uh, get your tracks going. So, there's, there's one animal. I mean, I could. Wouldn't hurt. Could take the pop shot, but I don't know. Let's just, let's just track it down. Make sure I get the tracks. 
Let's see, is that a hunting stand or is it information? Looks like it might be an information pile. Ooh. I'm making noise. Ah, there it is. That's all I'm looking for. Just tracks. Nah, 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 nah. That's one. Did it count it? I'm guessing it counted it. I'm... It's gonna pretend it did. I might... Yeah. Yep. Yeah, looks... Oh, it's a landmark. Got a landmark here. We can limit the fires that are being started by people. But the lightning strikes where it wants. Ah, uh, there's some water. There's a water source here, so... Bound to find at least... Let's see. Bound to find at least some wolves. Maybe a fox. I don't know if there's any other animals nearby. But if I want to find wolves, I technically know where to find some of them. There's some of them up here. So I could always go to that lake next. Just fast travel to the outpost and go to the lake. I'm just going to casually walk towards this water source and see if there's anything over there. My estimate is that that's where that moose was coming from. It's that water source. La da di da. La da di da da da. La da di da. I do have to say though. Even after working out in the morning, my, my body still wants coffee. <laughs> it's just, just like, oh my god, I still need it. <clears throat> oh, man. There's some wolves. There's some wolves. Let's see. Not quite downwind from them. Might have to shoot a couple. See, they're traveling. Oh, they're fleeing right now. So they know where I am. Shit, they're going around. Okay. Might have to fight some wolves. We don't. Heart shot. You get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Don't let me catch you. Don't let me catch you. Tail between your legs, you dogs. This is their land. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's like, this is their territory. It's not like I'm a rancher. I'm trying to kill them all. Ruining my livestock. Yeah, there's a... There's been some stupid things happening in this state, too. Apparently, they tried to... Well, they didn't try. They did reintroduce uh, wolves in the local area. And guess where they put them? Near ranches. <laughs> guess what's gonna happen to those wolves? They're gonna get shot. <laughs> yeah, smart. Yeah. I know you're wanting to like reintroduce wolves in Colorado and all that, but not 
don't don't put them in local areas, man. Don't put them near so close to uh so close to humans. Oh, that was a heart shot. Nice. Heart and lung. So now that I got Oh, okay. Not, not three types of animals, it's three different but at least animals. Some animals are starting to come back. I don't have any more work for you out in Tikon Forest. Cool. I just received a message from a research team that could probably use a little assistance. Let me speak with them, and I'll mm. be in touch with you shortly. Oh. <laughs> well, cool. Get more trophies on top of my platinum. I have a new job for you. One of Yukon Valley's research teams have asked if we can help them to fix a piece of the equipment they're using to track animals around the reserve. There is a box of parts that you'll need to pick up, sitting in one of our outposts. Okay. I'll mark it on your map. Yeah, I'll mark it on my map. Alright, so it's a... Uh, Normally, I tell them it's easy for this. But they need to wrap up their research before winter settles on the reserve. Uh-huh. It'll be a much easier job if we help them out. And I'd like to keep working with them next year. I'll call you when you're getting close to the outpost. At any one time, stored in that outpost, Yukon Valley is hosting at least five go. different scientific... The fuck? A lot of them are a simple case of setting up some recording equipment... <laughs> that? ...leading us to record data. But some involve... A more hands-on approach. Uh, yeah, he was talking twice there. I don't get to use my biological science degree as much as I'd like. But it helps me when it comes to working with research teams and their ilk. That's what we're looking for. Next step is using those parts to fix a radio relay that is being used to track animals. Ladder. The relay is part of a lookout tower. According to the researchers, it should be an easy fix. We got some bison. I've still yet to actually shoot a bison in uh, the Yukon yet. Shot, shot some bison in a, in a few other maps, but I haven't gotten one in a, in a Yukon. Right, so I'm going to go to that watchtower and put the equipment there. Oh my gosh! What crap! <laughs> Apparently my body needs more protein. Need some protein! Protein! <laughs> if I'm correct though, when it comes to the maps that I own and not own, I think there's only two, maybe three more maps I need to get, and I have all of them. So I don't have the latest one, which I think is Mississippi. Due to the fact that Mississippi next to Africa has one of the more exotic animals to hunt. Is like, uh, that's something I would like to invest in. Because being able to hunt alligators, <laughs> that's going to be, that's going to be an, an interesting experience. It's like, wow, I don't think I would have ever shot an alligator, ever. <clears throat> Even where I grew up in Georgia, there's, there wasn't alligators. <laughs> <laughs> There's no alligators in Georgia. I have to go just a state over, and then you find alligators. 
unless the uh, years have changed and the alligators have went a little bit further north. But I don't think they have. I don't think Georgia will allow the alligators to cross the border. <laughs> Say no alligators in our state, you hear? Yeah, it's like uh, bass hunting. You got your got your catfish. Catfish is definitely the prize winner for fishing in Georgia. Yeah, some really good catfish in Georgia. So if you're a person that likes to fish, I suggest go down to Georgia. Start fishing in those ponds. You'll get yourself a catfish in no time. They they do bite. They they bite down. They're, they're not hesitant when it comes to bait. It's really good. It's really good fishing. I'm hoping that tech trials like mm. this tracking system will help Yukon Valley stand out as a hub of scientific research here in Alaska. Speaking of research, I have your samples on board now. With any luck, cool. I'll have them handed over for testing before the end of the day. Very cool. You're close to the tower. Find the relay's control panel and open it up. Your replacement parts should slot right in. Cool. I guess now we'll find out just how much of an easy fix it is. But I'm no technician. I'm just a hunter. Yeah, I'm... I, I'm... I'm flexible and shit, but I don't know about tech. <laughs> It does kind of show, like, this game does kind of show you what, like, other hunters and reservists have to actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's like, it's not all just sitting there and everything like that. You actually have to do work. The Firewatch people always have something to do on a daily basis. I got some slippery uh, steps here. Oh, I hear him. There he is. There's the guy on the radio. Not flying about. It's like I knew I would see him again. You're scaring all the animals away. You dick. Hey, get out of here. <laughs> oh, is that where it is? Yeah. You did it? It's I think working. I did it. It's green. I will check in with the researchers to let them know it's fixed. They probably noticed that their equipment's range has just risen dramatically. Should I get my laser pointer? <laughs> called the research team and they've confirmed that the relay is working now. They've asked if you mm. could take a look at one of their trackers that has been dormant for the last 13 hours or so. They weren't sure if the lack of movement had been due to poor signal, but now they're certain that something's happened. I'll forward the details. Okie dokie, artichokey. Checking on that relay. There's my good old truffle. Yep. Coffee is about out. Getting close. Got like at least maybe another hour or so of coffee. And then I'm gonna have to move on and go to our playthrough. I was going to see if, uh, it's like Freya's not in here, but I'm going to have to see if she wants her food. I know she was eating a little bit this morning, but she might still be hungry. So I have to, as I grab myself a little bit of a nibble, I'm going to see if she needs her food. So me and the, uh, the good old Freya dog of the house. See if she needs her food or not. Let's 
since it's like nine o'clock though, it still feels a little too early to eat. Still feels a little too early. I don't know. I was gonna say before I take any more steps further, I'd like to see if there's any animals nearby. Don't see anything. Nothing of consequence. Yeah, we're good. It's your favorite game? I didn't know you played this. <laughs> hey, APZ. What up? Finally, <laughs> yeah, I'm playing. And I'm gonna try and make it to where every morning game that I play, I try and like spend a week for each game that I do mornings of. So this week is uh, this week's gonna be the Hunter Call of the Wild. I'll be playing it. If I ever do any morning streams this week, it's gonna be Hunter Call of the Wild. I'll be doing my hunting. Then next week it's gonna be different. And just gonna try and rotate the games so that way we spend more quality time with said morning games but at the same time too like after the morning games we'll do our playthroughs <clears throat> just go on break real quickly and switch games and that's what we're gonna do that's the plan well yeah I know at least you if anyone plays this game so Always keep it on the chopping block. <laughs> that and I just like playing this game. The game's just relaxing. That and it's fucking gorgeous at times. Like this? This little thing right here? That's a photo-esque moment if I ever saw it. <laughs> How is my day today? Oh boy. Uh, my day has been actually really good. We started our day real early. Woke up around 4.30 a.m. Went straight to the gym. Our gym opens around um, 5 o'clock. So we got there right when they kind of somewhat opened their doors. There's already a bunch of people at the gym at 5 a.m. So there's a lot of older clientele that usually kind of goes to the gyms. So if you ever wanted to see old people work out, <laughs> if that's your thing, uh, go in the morning. Uh... But yeah, we we were in the gym for like a good hour or so, you know, hit the sauna after a workout and um got back home, made some coffee, and um started the stream. So our, our day has been pretty damn good. I do have to say it. Our day has been fantastic. I'm sorry that you can't sleep. I always hate that feeling. There's there's been days or nights. There's been nights where I have a hard time sleeping. I don't have insomnia or anything, but fuck. <laughs> yeah, we go to a place called 24 Hour Fitness. But um, uh, due to the fact that I think either one, they're under staff, or two, there's regulations where they can't stay open 24 hours. They're having to... They're slowly increasing their times again, but um, eventually, from what, from talking to one of the staff members at the gym, they're they're trying to get it to where they're doing twenty four hours. But um, going to the gym that early now opens up our schedule quite a bit, so now I can do longer streams and not have to worry about ending the stream at like three o'clock or so, as I usually have to do. Or having a very short, like, evening stream. I can ac actually have longer evening streams if we want to do that, too. So, it, it opens up our schedule a lot. Not having to go to the gym around 5 p.m. and do all that stuff. That's the thing here, though. Uh, due to the past two years, I think most workplaces, for some reason in America just don't have the workforce anymore. A lot of people just either one, they don't want to work anymore 
<laughs> two. But there's this like there's more there's more people hiring apparently than um applying for jobs. It has it's been like that for the past year now. It's been uh it's been pretty bad. <laughs> I don't even know if uh, twenty if twenty four hours is actually hiring. I'll probably try and join their staff because uh, I wouldn't mind having at least some type of part time job. I can do it like either in the mornings or somewhere by the time uh, maybe the same hours that Lara works. So I can like go to the gym in the morning, work out, and then kind of stay there. And work at the gym. We'll do that. That would probably work out really well. It's like, hey, yeah, you, should, you can leave me here, Laura. I'll, you can pick me up by the time you're done with your shift. <laughs> you can leave me at the gym. Seems like working at that gym is pretty good, too. I've never worked at a gym before. So, uh. It's probably pretty decent. It's like, I don't want to... Uh, like, of course, when you work at a gym, though, you're going to try and, like, recruit people to the gym and stuff like that. How's the hospital in the U.S. Uh, compared to uh, Australia or different places? Um, Like, our hospital status? Uh, I think they're okay. I think they're floating. Or they have enough staff members and all that to keep up float. But I think a lot of people in that workforce is very uh, fatigued. They're tired. <laughs> there's a lot of people quitting from what I know. But there's a lot of people sticking around in the hospitals and doing their jobs. So I don't, I, I don't know what the actual situation is in our, at least our hospitals. But yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's weird. It's, we're just U.S. as it is is just in a very weird state. We're just in this like really weird twilight zone part of the thing. There's a fox. Is it expensive? Uh, depending on what you need, but even for like a normal checkup, it can get expensive if you don't have health insurance. So if you don't have health insurance, you're going to be paying out of pocket. And um, depending on, it, there's different classes of health insurance, depending on if you pay more. Ooh, hey. There's a bison somewhere over there. Depending on your insurance plan, you know, they'll either pay for the majority of it or you pay 50-50. <laughs> it just depends on your plan. Are you paying more for your insurance? Who knows? Yeah, but if you're a person that lives in America and you have a lot of health problems and you don't have health insurance, um, you're 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 kind of screwed financially. Like you kind of need health insurance, especially if you're a person that gets sick a lot, gets hurt a lot, has a lot of health problems. You you need it. You need health insurance. Sadly, and they they pay you know, you. You pretty much pay them an arm and a leg just for the health insurance. Like some health insurances will be like fifty dollars a month to around a hundred dollars a month. It it's uh Yeah, there's a lot of animals over here. Yeah, like um Yeah, if you ever go and all that <laughs> it's try not to get hurt. I mean to be honest, if you're just visiting America and all that, I don't know how they handle foreigners. I'm pretty sure it's like, oh, look, this person's from overseas. We're, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, re I really don't know how they handle people visiting America if they do get hurt. I think if anything, your best your best bet is just to go back to your the country that you came from, Australia, and get your medical attention there. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like broke something or you punctured something you don't have a choice <laughs> you kind of have to go to a local hospital like stat 
I don't know. I don't know how I don't know how we handle people visiting the states and if they do get hurt. Like like for instance, like a very good example is if they go snowboarding over here and they like fucking hit a tree or they broke their arm. Like how, how do people coming to America handle the whole health insurance thing? Since they're so used to either universal health care or something like that. It is a very interesting thought. It's like, I wonder how people handle that. It's like, yes, our health care is expensive for just a normal person, but it's also good health care because uh, you, get, you get your treatment, like, fast. You don't have to wait. That, that is one positive about it. Scared them off before they could really finish their meal. Mm. Grab the collar and you're good to go. Where's the collar? Ah. Uh. Okay. I think we're done here. Let's move on before anything comes sniffing around. I saw the wolves over there. I've been using Copper Bowl Lake Outpost as their base camp. And you can drop the collar off there. Don't expect company, though. The research team are always out and about. <sighs> oh, man. I'm practically finishing my coffee. Shit. Coffee was just good enough to finish it pretty early today. <laughs> Yeah, my body is dying for food though. Like I'm not hungry, but I know it's like it's wanting some substance. I knew I could count on you to get the job done. You're becoming my ambassador out here, and I gotta say, your work so far has impressed me. At this rate, I'll actually be able to do some paperwork today. Seems a little strange to be excited about that, I guess. Hopefully. I'll manage to spend some time with my wife this month. I love coffee too. That's why we have this segment. <laughs> I gave your number to Oscar, the researcher in charge of this particular population study. He and I work well enough together, but you'll be better placed to help him out. You might have already heard from him about work he needs help with. He injured his knee in the summer, so he's a little behind schedule. Gotta get that money. Gotta get that power. It's not about. During my last flyby, mm. I noticed that there were people walking around inside of the Millerwood Mine Complex. The entire complex is closed to the public, but that hasn't stopped some people from trying to explore the buildings. I'd like you to head over there. Make sure that the place is still secure. And the mine's darn been tourist. The field since the mine closed in the 30s. We occasionally get curious tourists, but once they see the no trespassing signs, they tend to take their pictures and move on without getting too close. The warnings are mainly for the benefit of the tourists anyway. Mm -hmm. They keep an eye on the place, but it isn't maintained. If you're injured out here, it's a long walk to find help. I suppose this is a good time to remind you to be careful while you're out there. Well, yeah, it seems like I'm the only person here. <laughs> the cost of renovating the place is staggering, especially when you consider that we'd need to build a road just to reach it. There's a couple of groups that could be our trespassers. We logged a pair of men that entered the reserve a few days ago, but they're here on a hunting trip. With a rum? Guy. Like rum with your coffee? Spike rum. I mean, spike coffee. The other group I know about is a film crew that asked for our help to shoot a documentary about what they call local folklore. Apparently, they've toured the USA hunting for monsters or aliens or something. Thing is, we have some Irish cream. I could have done that. Could have had some alcohol. Uh, to the tall tales of drunken alcohol drunken. spiked coffee today. I've been here for almost two oh, days. just rum. I was like, I love rum. I never had Australian rum, though. I've always 
I just I just had you know your plain ass rum. <laughs> I've had top shelf rum. I had your lower shelf rum. I had a bunch of different rums. Now you got your mixing rums. You got your spiced rums. You got a lot of rums. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I like out of next to that though. Like my favorite things to drink is of course your whiskey. But I'm. Uh, like I'm definitely a scotch kind of guy. Lar and I, Lar and I have gotten into gin. Uh, we like uh, there's a gin that we got not too long ago called the Botanist. Has 22 different herbs infused into the uh, the gin itself. Very very fragrant. Uh, a lot of the people that we introduced it to reminded them of like perfume. Uh, maybe even like cologne. I was like, huh, yeah, I can get it, but you can you can smell more of the herbs than anything. It's not if you're if you know what those herbs smell like, you can you can smell them. But it's like it doesn't taste, it doesn't ch taste like uh, like rubbing alcohol or anything. It, you taste more of the herbs than anything, and it's really, really, like smooth. It's not, you know, yeah, it makes you, it's, it's like a refreshing drink for the botanist. So that's like, it's pretty good. How do I drink gin? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess with the botanist I can. I don't know about any of the other gins. I've had my, my martinis though. I've definitely had my vodka martinis with gin. I haven't had any gin and tonics, so I don't know if I like gin and tonics. But I've I've had plenty of different martinis, so I know I can drink gin. Gin's very dry though, so if you're not a person that likes dry drinks, then gin's not gonna be. I can understand why people don't like drinking gin. You gotta have like you gotta be a person that likes a dry palate. Ooh, wait. More oh, okay, it's a red fox, not a wolf. I'd rather not run across any more wolves. Yeah, I'm 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 a whiskey kind of guy, and I'm a scotch kind of guy. Those are like my two favorite ones, next to rum. So rum, scotch, whiskey. Do any of you guys ever ever meet me in person? We go out to get some drinks. That's that's the drinks I like. John Walker, I've heard of that one. Heard of that brand. pre-mixed cans <laughs> oh like the uh, cocktails in a can I've heard I've heard of those you, know, you can get a cocktail like in a can and get your you know, get all your pre-made you get like it's just weird you can get old fashions in a uh, one of those like you know beer cans it's very odd <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they're not that great compared to actually like if you actually make your own old fashioned. Um there nothing ever beats making the drink yourself. Not really cocktails. Oh, for the John Walkers, yeah. But I'm I'm I like you know, thinking about like pre mixed cans though. I'm thinking about those uh pre made cocktails that you can just buy. <laughs> it's like they're definitely not the thing you want to like put your money towards is probably better just to like get the alcohol separate. Hopefully you have like something to mix your alcohols with and just do it that way. <laughs> it's better to make your own drinks than to buy them pre-made. Pre-mix with uh, Coca-Cola. Ah. Are they flat or they do they still have the carbon uh carbonation in them? Are they still kind of fizzy? Cuz usually when you introduce alcohol into anything that's carbonated, it just goes flat instantly. So I'm kind of wondering, do they still how do they still hold the uh carbonization and with the alcohol in it? It always seems like 
alcohol just tends to take out any carbonization in any drink. <laughs> it's it's a fine science. So that's the thing too, is like if I'm gonna get something like that, it's gotta be like hopefully it's not flat as shit. So that's the that's the thing too, is like, ah oh man, flat coke is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, like, when I make a mixed drink, I'm drinking it, like, right away. It's good, though? Yeah. I mean, you have enough sugar in it where it's not gonna... It's not gonna taste too bad. I mean, like, squeeze a little bit of lime in it. You're good to go. Get some acidity. And get like a lemon pill and squeeze the lemon pill on top of the drink and you get a little bit of a nip of the uh, lemon. Get those lemon oils in the drink. Those are always good. And a lot of people don't tend to think about that, but if you add some type of citrus to your like mixed drinks, it's another step up, man. It tastes so much better. It's cheap for a four pack pre mixed uh, Jim Bean. So I don't, I don't like Lara and I have never really gotten pre mixed stuff. I guess the closest thing to it's like, you know, you got your you got your Mike's Hards and stuff like that, which are technically they're not like mixed drinks. They're just you know drinks you can get lighter, Mike's harder. If I didn't eat, like for a while and I drink like two of those Mike's Harders I get I get real fuzzy <laughs> it's like hey shit they have enough alcohol to make me a little uh, tipsy there <laughs> I'm down for that that's if I don't eat quite some time though it's like yeah before we go to our concert today too I kind of wanted to get a little buzz before we you know, hitting the, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a long concert too. We really don't want to spend our money getting those overpriced drinks at the concert. Kraken? Like Kraken, uh, rum? If that's the case, then yeah, we bought a bottle or two of Kraken. It's the one that has like, you know, kind of like the Cthulhu head on the bottle. At, you know, back in head. You know what rum I like? Uh, Cannon Blast. Cannon Blast is a good one. If you ever come across Cannon Blast, uh, it's a tradition for Lara and I every uh, Halloween to have her own bottle of Cannon Blast because they're like in a bottle of like gunpowder. And we'll like, you know, just drink it as we're playing a game like, um, we're, we're, we'll be playing a game like, uh, un, until dawn, we'll finish the game, but we'll be like drunk as shit. <laughs> That's a fun little tradition we've done for quite some time. We'll get drunk playing like, uh, one of the, uh, <laughs> until dawn. Which actually, speaking of Until Dawn, their uh, second major game, other than the Dark Picture Anthology games, uh, The Quarry, I think it's called, that should be coming out this year. So I'm excited about that. I have an, another full, full game of theirs that is somewhat relative, relatively long and has enough content like Until Dawn. The quarry is going to have a lot of pretty interesting actors, too. There's a guy from Scream that played uh, he Dewey. I think his name was Dewey, the character. I forgot his name, though. The actual actor's name. But he's going to be in the game. He looks so much older. Even in the game, he looks so much older. It's like, dude has aged. I know I haven't seen him since the 2000s, but fuck. <laughs> he's gotten old. <laughs> Wild Turkey? I've heard of that too. You're, you're, 
you're spouting off a couple names that I actually know. Yeah, I kind of know that too. Um, there's a recent whiskey that we bought not too long ago called Slaughterhouse. It's not that smooth. The taste is a little funky, but it's it's still good. It'll still get you tipsy. Ah, uh, so that's the mine, and I'm going to the mine. Never played any PS4 horror games. Any good ones to try out? Uh, there's a couple. I I definitely suggest any of the P, uh, any of the games that the guys from Until Dawn made. Cause one, they're not like they're not super stressful to play. You can kind of enjoy them. Like literally, as I, well, what I said not too long ago is you can play those games and get drunk and not have to worry about your consequences. <laughs> I want to be certain. If you're a Resident Evil fan, there's plenty of Resident Evil games on PS4, and eventually you can, you know, if you have a PS5 one day, you can play it on the PS5 because all of that's backwards compatible. But if you're if you're looking to try out uh, any horror games, uh, there's a good amount of horror games we played in the past that's in our completed games list that you can check out. That we played most of those either are on the Xbox or PS4, which anything that we played on the Xbox is most likely on the uh, PS4 as well. Last of Us? Yeah, it's good, but I wouldn't consider it a horror game. Yeah, Post-apocalyptic survival. It's really good, yeah. I would highly suggest playing Last of Us. Definitely the first one, the remastered version on the PS4. And then, um, if you're interested, after you play uh, the Last of Us. Try and pick up the uh, the second game because they're they're fairly cheap now. Uh, am I checking the locks and all that? There's a door. Check it out. This building is secure. Okay. Still in place. Might have to check all the doors. Guess I'm gonna have to check all the doors. Making sure I. Do my gerb. Hopefully the other hopefully the other building I passed didn't have a door I needed to check. That looks nice and snug. Well, that looks good. I'm guessing I'm having to find a door that has no chains on it. Maybe this one. There might be a door over there. No. Nobody's getting in there. The well, lock has done its job. Good. Very good. How about this one? Oh, I'm not seeing chains on it. <laughs> looks like this building. Oh, shit. Yep. Yeah, it looks like there's been some squatters. This door should be locked. The building's empty. I looks like it. Why they'd want to be in here anyway. Squatters. I'm gonna call Gabriella Baden's film crew. Yeah. I actually don't see any. I just want to make sure it's not them who have been breaking into the buildings. What? Okay. Is that the phone I'm calling? Not much point in me calling it now, huh? I didn't expect this from a professional film crew. What hmm. possessed them to enter this building? Good shots. Opportunities. To speak to them about what they've done here. That phone you picked up is the only way I had of contacting them. So we're going to have to track them down. Great. Given their total lack of bushcraft or respect for their surroundings, it should hopefully be an easy trail to follow. You've done a lot to help. But this is going to need an officer on site just in case things get I see up. a campfire over there. On my way. There's a fire definitely over there. I wonder if that's where I need to go. Ah, oh, so they're Bigfoot. Documentus. Look, to your east. There's a column of smoke. Mm-hmm. It looks like it's coming from close to one of our lookouts. I see it. I told you they'd be easy to track. Let's catch up with them before they set the whole forest ablaze. And it's like, hey, this is dry country. 
better put that fucking out. Or I'll put a bullet right between your eyes. Oh, Evil Within. If you um, like the original director from the person that created Resident Evil, that's one of his games. Um, it can be difficult, but it's a really good horror game. Evil, Evil, Evil Within 2 even ups it, and I think Evil Within 2 is even better than the original Evil Within. It's so good. It, it's, a good it's a good horror franchise. And uh, the game that they just made, it's the same team that made Evil Within, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo just came out like about like two, three weeks ago. And that one's doing pretty decent too. But Ghostwire Tokyo isn't a horror game nece necessarily. It's more of an action game with horror elements. But yeah, if you're if you're eyeing uh, Evil Within, I I suggest Evil Within. Evil Within's really good. Wow. But yeah, that game can get hard, especially if you're not used to. Inventory management, uh, ammo, a a like a ammo management and all that. If you're, if you're not a, if you're not a person that has played a lot of Resident Evils and stuff like that, it's gonna be a very hard game to get into. Cause uh, ammo is very scarce, and uh, survival in a combat is also pretty hard. <laughs> that Evil Within can get difficult. Especially if you play an Akuma difficulty, which is its hardest difficulty. That is a stuff of nightmares. I I haven't even tried playing it on Akuma difficulty. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not doing that. Because it's permadeath too. So if you die anytime in the Akuma playthrough difficulty, uh, like you can almost be done and you're about to beat the game. And if you die... It just deletes the save file. <laughs> it's like, oh my fucking god. How do people play it on the hardest difficulty? Because <laughs> there's so many ways to die in the game, too. There's traps, not just enemies. You got a, got a creature in the game that can one-shot you if they get too close to you. <laughs> Do I know? Oh yeah, I know about that game. Apparently, the newest White, well, White Day, isn't that great though. I know, I remember the original one uh, being good, but I think the newest one. I think that I think that is the newest one. A labyrinth named uh, School might not be the great the good one. That one kind of did so so. It's like that game dropped off my radar because it and. I think critics and players alike weren't really giving it too well of like too well of scores and reviews and all that. Not a lot of good things were being said about White Day. I say if you want to check out any games from that time era of like hell, even PS3 and Xbox 360, um, I highly suggest Dead Space. Dead Space is a really good horror franchise. Sci-fi horror. So if you like your sci-fi horrors, Dead Space. Dead Space is an absolutely guarantee. It's gonna it's gonna make you like it. <laughs> you found their camp. But where are they? Look at the mess. Until dawn, you mean? It looks like something big has turned the place upside down. Cause I was I was talking about it. I it's one of my favorite ones from PS4. Take a look around the camp and see if there's anything that can tell us where they went. There's a journal. Look, a notepad. Hmm. Interior haunted mine. Yeah, the gameplay until dawn is like uh, you know, you kind of walk around. You interact with things. Uh, there's a lot of dialogue. You choose what you're going to say. Uh, there's a lot of quick time events. So if you're a person that don't like quick time events in your games, that's pretty much most of the actions are done with quick time events. 
uh, until dawn even has the mechanic with the ps5 or ps uh, playstation controllers where you have to hold a controller still to like simulate that your character shouldn't move and if you fuck it up it could lead to a bad consequence and shit <laughs> Uh, some of my Until Dawn runs have uh, ended badly because the controller, for some reason, thought I was moving. So sometimes those uh, mechanics are a little no, sketchy. No, not. Not even the most ignorant townie would even consider baiting animals out here. Bigfoot bait. Looks a lot like dog food and steel donuts to me. Can you play any of those games at night? Um, I mean, depending on how you handle horror games. I think in, out of all the games that we've mentioned, uh, the easiest one, especially if you get scared quite easily, is uh, Until Dawn. Until Dawn's pretty easy to play. You're not going to get scared too badly. There's a couple jump scares here and there, but not too bad. Compared to, like, some of the more involved the games. <laughs> the stories of truly bizarre people, but it doesn't help us find them. Oh. But I can't see anything. Get to the lookout. Someone's getting attacked by a fucking grizzly. <laughs> Sounds like it came from over there. Wait, do they want me to keep Yeah, sound sounds like it was from over here. All right, just making sure nothing's happened. I do need to check the uh, slow cooker downstairs pretty soon. So I think after this mission's over, I'm uh, gonna take a quick break and move on to uh, more cyberpunk. God, if there's actually a grizzly out here though, I might not I don't might not want to move. Uh, it's not a grizzly tracks. You watched the original Halloween? Or did you watch uh what is it, Rob Zombie's Halloween? Oh, okay. From the nineties? Wait, nineties. I'm guessing it wasn't the first Halloween because the first Halloween I think started in the early 80s the 90s I've got them they're uh, here coming out of the forest what the one of them is covered in blood they've seen me hey over here make your way to me Get into the plane. So there's a grizzly bear attacking people. So they must have either ran down a hill and what? I have a feeling they're near the lake or river. Let's see. I haven't seen any of their tracks or anything like that, so I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going the right way or not. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of horror movies. I haven't seen any real good ones lately, though. At least this past year, maybe half year been kind of dry for us so far haven't found any recent ones that have piqued our interest so we're big fans of movies like heredity and everything heredity is a really good one <laughs> and midsummer same same uh director and team like that
also like uh, Jordan Pills movies. Get Out. His new one, Nope. Oh, okay. I guess there, if there is a horror movie that we're actually interested in that's going to be coming out sometime this year, it's a, a movie called Nope. That's from Jordan Pill as well. That one looks interesting. Where, where are we actually going? <laughs> As I say, if you have a hard time sleeping after like horror movies or playing horror games, you're going to have a very hard time with some of the movies I will suggest you. <laughs> it's like, whatever you do, don't watch any movies I will suggest to you. You have a very hard time with uh, kind of dealing with any of that. Right, I'm going to go back this way. I don't know what I'm doing to trigger certain events. I think I just need to just explore. I'd probably go back to the camp. Trust me, there's a good amount of people I know that visit this channel that hate, hate anything horror. <laughs> This is like a nope. I don't like it. I don't like it. And one of her mods, uh, Rokuman, he doesn't like uh, horror stuff. <laughs> he has a very hard time with horror. It's like, how do you play these games? I would have quit. <laughs> how do you play these? Anytime horror month comes around, too. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's, he's glad he's not playing him and I am instead. I was like, yep, yep, I understand. Wait a minute. Oh. Maybe that's where I need to go. Because there is a grizzly that is possibly uh, chasing people. Was that the grizzly I saw? This is net, it's technically a resting area for the grizzly. I wonder if that was the grizzly I saw. Ah, uh, yeah. That must have been the grizzly I saw. <clears throat> so I saw something running in this direction. Hmm. Walk a bit. Let the grizzly cool down for a second. I have no clue if this is the grizzly that was attacking those dudes. But knowing grizzlies, there's not too many grizzlies in one area. They're very territorial animals. If the game simulates that. If the game doesn't simulate that, bad, bad video game. You should know that bears are territorial. <laughs> what the? Oh no, the game crashed. I think the game crashed. Well, if the game did crash, guess not set for the hunter. Yep, the game crashed. Damn. 